Hey, it's Andrew or Andy, depending on how you know me. Today's my 53rd birthday, and I've been so touched by so many people reaching out to me today. I want to do something a little different to thank you all. Family and a very blessed wide range of friends. From those who know me from my Nicholas Wilson public school days, Sir Wilfrid Laurier secondary school days, King's College at Western University days, growing up in London as a professional speaker traveling North America, Youth Leadership Camps Canada, through my wife and Chalmers Presbyterian Church, neighbors that became friends, parents of my daughter's kids that become friends, all of you, thank you, I genuinely thank you. You have no idea how much you reaching out to me throughout this past year and really over these last three years if you've watched my rather unique journey through the pandemic. I was in New Brunswick on March 13th, 2020 when I knew that Everything I knew was going I, about life and my career was changing overnight. That weekend, I lost uh, 31 bookings. And within 10 days of that last speech at Belle Isle Regional High School, within 10 days, I'd be working full time at Costco on March 23rd. So during the pandemic, I learned four new jobs. I had 10 months at Costco, moved my entire industry online for two and a half years. What's powerful is a year ago today, my birthday, I was day one of working for the Middlesex London Health Unit at the vaccination clinic at the Western Fair where I would end up working for two months during the peak of the uh, Omicron and the third doses and second doses for all the teenagers. It was a year ago today. The schools were still closed that two week break. It was so wild and weird. And I had virtual speeches canceled that month. Like it was just, I was so unsure when I'd even be back in a school. Then the London District, District Catholic School Board called me in late February, just perfect timing as the health unit was drying up. And I got on the supply teacher list, doing my first supply teaching at a uh, school in Woodstock. And that first day just epitomized all the challenges in the schools when I walked in to see, to see this principal. And she said, I know you were signed up to do grade five, but I don't have a kindergarten teacher. Do you do kindergarten today? And I'm 52 years old and I've never been a supply teacher before. <laughs> and I just smiled and nodded and said, okay. And there was one point that day where the teacher had made this incredible rocket. And a lot of my job that day, because the rocket was brand new, was just giving people, kids turns to fly in the rocket. And I say to this kid, where are you going to fly to? And he said, Belmont. <laughs> because I guess one of his parents lives in Belmont. Go see my dad. I said, why do you go further? And he said, I'm going to go to the sun. I said, that's a good destination. What are you going to bring? I think I need sunglasses. <laughs> And I knew that in the depths of still all the strangeness of last March, where the teachers had to keep on taking five day um, COVID related, you know, quarantines and the short staffing. And there I was one day kindergarten, one day grade six, one day grade nine. At that moment, I realized, hey, this is where I need to be. You know, it's certainly not 
2019, but it's where I needed to be. So to both the health unit and the London District Catholic School Board, thank you for guiding me through the early part of last year. And then it happened. May 13th, 2022. 27 months after my last in-person assembly, I was back in a school. So my first school assembly after the pandemic was at St. Joseph's Elementary School, and I did a grade one to four assembly. And there was this one moment where the kids were roaring so hard in laughter, my right opening way joke that I, I had a tear in my eye. I just had not heard that volume of laughter. It was amazing. So it felt so good to get back on the road last May and June. Had my first flight in two and a half years when uh, Heartland uh, Community School in New Brunswick flew me out to speak to their grad, which I hadn't spoken at a grad other than to uh, Laurier Secondary School's grad class every year. And then I hadn't spoken at a grad in like 15 years. So for that to be my first flight, what a unique experience that was. My first flight to the United States again, speaking at the LEAP Conference in California with Dr. Bill and Charlie and my friends down there. Fantastic to be back. You know, the fall was 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 interesting. Um, it was all driving trips across Ontario and back into New York and Michigan. Not as busy as I'd like, but boy, there's a lot of demand as a supply teacher. Wow. And trying to find that unique balance between pursuing my dream of speaking and really helping my friends at the school board. But when I look back at this past year as a 53-year-old, highlights include getting back into the concerts, Glorious Sons, David Wilcox, and being with my buddy Steve at Def Leppard. At one point, we are taking a tour of downtown Detroit on this bar that you bike on. And each party that was in it got to control the music for about 20 minutes. And so the group of ladies were South Asian, so they cranked this danceable Bollywood music. So there's me and Steve Calhoun dancing Bollywood on a gorgeous 28 degree Celsius day in Detroit. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is what I missed during the pandemic. <laughs> include winning our Chalmers Presbyterian tennis tournament and then a week later saying goodbye to Reverend John as he retired from our church after 25 years and 25 years matching perfectly my own involvement in Chalmers and for me to be blessed to deliver uh, about a 12 minute tribute to him was a real highlight of this past year. Another highlight of this past year, my daughter Tori deciding to spend a week on the French shore of Nova Scotia taking a French course at Collage Saint Anne. And what was powerful about that was it was, you know, her commitment to go away, do something on her own without her parents between grade 11 and grade 12. So proud of her. But at the same time, that's where my ancestors are from. The Thibodeaux or Acadian East Coast, Nova Scotian French that were there for over 100 years until the British kicked us out in 1755. And so for her to go back, wow. That same day, then Liz and Isla and I went to family camp at Camp Kintail, which we had missed for a couple of years. And to have a fantastic family weekend together at Kintail, what a blessing. being part of the goodbye to Youth Leadership Camps Canada, camp I helped found in 1993 and Stu took over in 97 and it's been his baby along with Dave Graham and their many friends and to be there for the good goodbye in October, to be on staff that week, to DJ 
not one but two dances that week to the last group of campers from a elementary school in Oakville. What a riot. What a riot. So powerful to see all the people impacted by that camp across 30 years and then to go back for three other days to help Stu close it out. Western football was a blast. Oh, we got so close to getting the Vanier Cup. Oh, so close. But we still went. We just were cheering for Saskatchewan. That was weird. But a special highlight, the Laurier Secondary School Rams football team. You know, Steve Calhoun invited me to go see the team when they played in St. Thomas for a night game. I just hadn't seen anything like it. I mean, we went to a few games the year before when they almost won the championship. But this team was just incredible. I, I, we just couldn't, I couldn't believe the professionalism with which they play, how fast they were, the t camaraderie, the teamwork. All of us alumni, the, the number of alumni that kept going to the games kept growing and growing. Like, what are we seeing? We're seeing something special. And they win the Thames Valley Championship. And then they defeat St. Thomas Aquinas and they win the Wausau Western Ontario Championship. So now they're off to the All-Ontario Championship against the number one team in Canada. We didn't have All-Ontario Championships in the 90s or 80s or 70s. So this was unique to all of us alumni. So there was this moment in late November. I'm at the University of Guelph wearing my Laurier Secondary School 1989 Student Council jacket, surrounded by all these 50-year-old football players and other alumni wearing their jackets from the 80s. And we're in Guelph watching our high school play football against a school from Newmarket? I actually said that out loud. I said, how strange is this that all these guys are here today to cheer on these young men. It was a highlight of my life, it really was. Back, Stu arrived at halftime, it was 12 to seven. He didn't even see Laurier score any points until the last second, it was 12-12. One second left and we kick a punt into their end zone. They had to get it out in order to not score a point. They didn't with this amazing tackle and we win by one point with no time remaining. It was the most exciting thing I have ever witnessed in person in my life. Five. Nicholas Fonte is the long snapper. Oh, they don't, I'll tell you what, here on Heights, they don't have a returner in the short side corner of the end zone, Jack. They got yeah. one guy behind the goalpost and one to the wide side. Oh, yes, I do see a third guy. He's so far over there, I couldn't see him. Hunt is away. It bounces. Return. Can he get out? No, he didn't get out! He got it! It's a miss! He got stopped a yard short! Laurier wins! He got stopped a yard short, Jack! Oh, my goodness! No, a game of unlikely scenarios just finished on the most unlikely. Wow! He needed to get out. Like we saw in the Dunsmore Cup, the Laval Rouge or beating the Montreal yes, Caravan. absolutely. A half a yard short. Laurier. You know, here's the thing. All he needed to do to force overtime was catch it and kick it. Just catch it and kick it back out. Don't even worry about can I get out or not. Right? And you just you make it. You get to overtime. You don't lose the game. The decision to try and run it out and not kick it has cost the game. Unbelievable. The Laurier Rams win it on a rouge, 13-12 the final. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question he's short. I don't think there's any question he's short. Wow, great coverage by Laurier. Fantastic coverage by Laurier in order to prevent him from getting out. And they got the single with zeros on the clock. Again, Jack, Canadian football only. Canadian football only. You don't see this. NCAA, NFL, you never see anything like this. Oh, the crowd was so fun. And to share that with all those men and women and the young men, it was just... Yeah! We won on a road! Yeah! We won on a road! We won on a road! Woo! 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 Yes! 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 Yeah.
Kaepernick. <laughs> and Lower Day Secondary School's football was so down almost exactly 19, 20 years ago, we didn't have a field of football team. And for Coach K and his entire team to stick with it across the 20 years, wow, so inspiring. Family, friends, thank you. In so many ways, you've really inspired me and blessed me throughout my entire 53-year career and life, but especially these past three years when it's been very unique and challenging at times. I'm looking at you, my Costco fellow employees who are still out there. But I end with this. So today, my mom, my in-laws came over for lunch and Tori was home and that was beautiful. I had birthday pie and one of my favorite meals, which was cheddar salsa bagel from Great Canadian Bagel. But then Liz and Isla came home and Liz had seen some of my virtual presentations and I had to change how I opened my speech because it didn't anyhow just to grab people's attention so I did this bit about where I'm from about London Ontario and I said when you're from London and you travel North America the number one thing people say to you is where's London to which Londoners say it's halfway between Detroit and Toronto it's just what we say well then I actually found an image of a man who bought, sells shirts that says that halfway between Detroit and Toronto. And it was a visual I used in my virtual speeches throughout 2021, 2022. In fact, I have a virtual speech coming up in a couple of days. Well, today on my birthday, Liz had found at the Christmas market It was just so thoughtful that she took a snippet of my unique life during the virtual years and my attempt to, again, grab my audience, make it funny, poke at my fun at myself a little bit. And it was just really thoughtful of her because she's been through so much too. And for her to now have such an incredible job teaching adult women as part of the Weeble Adult Education Center. But the program is at her alma mater, Brescia University College, all women's college there at West University. I'm just so proud of her. It's that level of thoughtfulness from her, my family, and all of you that has really kept me going. If you hung in there and watched this entire video, wow. Yeah, it ended up being longer than I thought, too. <laughs> but thank you. I love you all very much.